he has come to understand. There's something called the forgot forgotten American. And this is an American who pays his taxes, takes care of his kids. He's been hurt by the economy in the United States, largely because he has not been able to keep up with the technological revolution. Schumpeter has talks about creative destruction. This fellow is on the destructive side of that equation. And if you lose your job and you were working at Bethlehem Steel and you got three kids and you're 55 years old and someone is saying to you, well, you're lucky if you can get a job at Walmart for $15 an hour, you're angry. And you're saying, who in Washington cares about me? But what about me? I fight our wars. I love America. I salute the flag. And no one cares about me. Why is that? That person was looking for a voice. Donald Trump, better or worse, has become the voice of those people. This is the disenfranchised, the dispossessed, the forgotten American. University professors who have now engaged in specialization, trivialization, and politicization no longer have any appreciation of the West. They don't live with Rembrandt. They don't live with, uh, with the great traditions of, our, of Mozart. They don't live with Beethoven. They, they do not live in a world where Socrates existed. They, no longer, they don't know that world. And that is the world that inspired the West. That's what students who go to a university today should understand, that there is a tradition that we have an obligation to transmit from one generation to another. When LBJ was elected president in 64, he engaged in a war on poverty. And he said, we have an obligation to deal with the poor in the United States, to make sure no one in America goes hungry, to make sure that every opportunity is provided for people who were formerly poor and could not get out of the, the, the uh, horrible cycle of poverty. He delivered a speech in the University of Texas that was among the most eloquent ever given about the rights of the poor and the desire on the part of our government to help. At that point, the poverty rate in the United States was 15 percent, recognizing the fact that poverty has some relationship to income, number of children in the family, and so on. What is the poverty rate in the United States today? 15 percent. How is it that after spending $20 trillion, I didn't say billion, $20 trillion, the poverty rate hasn't moved at all in the United States? capitalism and the extraordinary wealth that's been created over the last two centuries hasn't come about because government has decided to use tax dollars and disseminate them properly. They've come about in large part because of ingenuity and because of the human ability to create something. I believe that all people possess that, but they have to be able to, it has to be able to flourish in an environment where freedom exists. When you impose government regulations on people, you take away their freedom. And it's not coincidental that we've had not one, not two, not three, four generations living in poverty and the poverty cycle. Same families, time after time. How is it that these programs are supposed to get them out of poverty, but in fact want to keep them in poverty? Because there are a lot of people who have a stake in the retention of a poor population in the United States.